Yo, going to bed pretty soon, but uh, my boss gave me a good video idea because he sent me this article, Why Vegetarianism Will Not Save the World. So I have not read this article yet. I'm just going to read it and uh, react to it. Or, uh, you know, try and have a real response as opposed to a reaction. But, so here, here we go. It's from Mat matadornetwork.com, good website. Why vegetarianism will not save the world, and this uh, sub caption is uh, says, "Agriculture is the most destructive thing humans have done to the planet." Okay, so I know already know what they're gonna, you know, that's the basis of their argument. Agriculture's bad, so if you eat animals, you don't have to deal with agriculture, which one is false. Two. It's <laughs> it doesn't save the world, so, uh, you know, um, we're not off to a good start here. Actually, grass-fed uh, ruminant animals are the leading cause of deforestation, not um, the agriculturally produced ones. So, if you want to reduce deforestation and you're, and you're eating grass-fed beef, switch to grain-fed beef, or better yet, no beef, but grain-fed beef causes less deforestation, less destruction of the rainforest than um, uh, grass-fed. So, let's start this article. It's by Ian McKenzie. Looks like a handsome guy. Nice uh, gentleman. Uh, it's, it's, he's got a nice little picture of a cave painting here. Okay. So, Oh, Lier Keith. So I already know this article is going to be fucking bullshit. Because Lier Keith, in case you haven't noticed... Uh, <laughs> see, pe people don't care who Lier Keith is. They just want to get back at the annoying vegan with this one article they read. I didn't go vegan because I read one article. You know? So why are you d making your decision based on this one stupid article written secondhand from... Uh, from uh, you know, this ex-vegan author with no credentials whatsoever, she's just some random writer, Lier Keith, and not a very good one. Because I've, I've heard some of the arguments she makes, and they're weak. So I'm going to see what he steals from her. And, uh, you know, I'm not super familiar with her work because it's a load of shit. Um, but let's, you know, start on a clean foot, see if this guy has any original thought, and... Uh, yeah, okay, first I want to see how long the article is. See how long this video is going to be so I can give you guys an estimate. Although you'll be able to see it. Um, okay, so... Yeah, okay, yeah, he's got like an article with Lear, uh, an interview with her. So, this will be a decent length of video, but I'm going to read it all. I'm going to send you a link to it so you all can read it. And scrolling back up, here we go. Control, controversial interview with author and ex-vegan Lier Keith and how, on how a vegetarian diet is not the answer to save our ailing planet. Did we ever say it was? Well, I guess, you know, we're, we want to save the planet, but not just by going to the grocery store and buying some fucking bananas. All right? We're not stupid. We want to save the planet, we're going to get started by doing the right thing for the environment. That is, reducing our carbon footprint. And being more compassionate. So, that's a pretty good start. You're not going to save the planet, so you might as well, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Fucking do something. Do something. Take fucking action. Don't be a victim. Like just because we're not gonna save the planet by doing one thing doesn't mean you should do nothing what it means is you should do something and continue to build on that so vegan if, if veganism is preschool I've said this in previous videos if if you're not vegan chances are you don't give a fuck about the planet anyway so don't talk to me about the fucking planet like if you don't care just tell me you don't care but don't mix it in with these other dishonest arguments like pretending you care because it just makes you look stupid. 
Um, so here we go. On the one hand, a locally grown steak from a cow raised on grass and without hormones. On the other hand, a highly processed soy burger <laughs> that was grown somewhere far away with many ingredients I cannot pronounce. Okay, I don't think I've had a single soy burger in my three years since I've been vegan, so... Uh, yeah, yeah. But anyway, let's not get hung up on the minor details. Up until a few weeks ago, the choice would have been easy. <laughs> okay, so this guy just stopped being vegetarian, I guess. As a vegetarian, the soy burger is the moral choice. Relying on the least amount of animal suffering, the least amount of carbon water use, and the best way for me to sleep at night. Agreed. <laughs> After reading Lear Keith's stunning and personal book, The Vegetarian Myth, now I'm not so sure. I consider myself a fairly well-informed eater. I've read the works of food activists Michael Pollan and Jonathan Safran Foer. I don't know who that is, actually. I've seen Food, Inc., ooh, and watched Gary Yurofsky's blistering attack on eating meat. If you don't know who Gary Yurofsky is, you're living under a rock. Clearly not into the vegan lifestyle, and that's okay. And yet, in her concise and poetic manifesto, ex-vegan Lierre argues that vegetarians and vegans have been led astray. We've been told that we can have a killing-free existence, and the path is paved with entirely vegetable diets. But herein lies the myth. The truth is that agriculture is the most destructive thing humans have done to the planet, and more of the same won't save us. Neither will eating fucking hamburgers, Lierre. God damn. <laughs> okay, so... The truth is that agriculture requires the wholesale destruction of entire ecosystems. That's true. The truth is also that life isn't possible without death. That no matter... Oh, so, so that's true. Life isn't possible without death. But that's a very general statement. Like, you have to die at the end of your life. So there's always going to be death. Things die. And no matter what you eat, someone has to die to feed you. Are you talking about bacteria that, like, die because of your stomach acid or something? Because I can eat fruit, I can eat lettuce, uh, you know, kale, green, any, any leafy greens. I can eat fruits and greens all day long, N never killing a single plant. And there's people that do that for years and years and years, never touching a single nut or seed, never... Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I often let my lettuce die. I'm not saying I replant all the lettuce that I eat. You know, once they get plucked out of the ground, you gotta put them, you gotta put the, you, you eat the lettuce and you actually have to put it back in the ground. But it's possible, so this, uh, you know, peop this so-called wisdom that people have, this, uh, perception of, like, the way the universe works is not true. It's, it, uh, I mean... Or it's grossly exaggerated, we'll put it that way. Um, either, either way, this is still not a terrible argument. It's just um, inaccurate and exaggerated. So, uh, or it's just exaggerated. So anyway, keep going. After reading the book, I had to interview, interview Lier about it and how we truly come to know our food. So here, co here comes the interview. Why did you feel this book had to be written? The most important reason is that the planet is being destroyed by the social arrangement called civilization. Now that's interesting because uh, my email address is vegancivilization at gmail.com. Um, I'm a civilized citizen. I'm all about becoming civilized. And so here we are, where, she, Lierre's right, civilization is destroying, well, it's, technically, it's the people, 
that are destroying it. So I think if we become more civilized, I have hope, I have faith that we uh, will we'll become civilized enough to learn to live in harmony with the planet uh, without us ha ha having to fight to survive and uh, living live a peaceful existence. I think being civilized is going to help make that happen. That's my belief and that's my vision for the future. But she's right, civilization right now is um, destroying the planet. But we are. Uh, we as a civilization. And she says, agriculture is the activity at the base of civilization. True, agriculture is, in fact, the most destructive thing that people have done to the planet. So Lier must be a hunter-gatherer because she clearly um, does not agree with agriculture. So she must be hunting and gathering her food 100% of the time. Or she just regards... Um, uh, so it's agriculture. It's not civilization that she's blaming. She's blaming agriculture. So she doesn't agree with agriculture. So she's 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 must not be eating any food that's produced using agriculture. So no local organic uh, corn, rice, lettuce. No local organic potato. You know anything grown on a farm. She, Lier does not eat anything grown on a farm. Um, or, or she just doesn't live by her own... Uh, well, I, I don't know what her beliefs are. She's just being truthful here. So ag agriculture is a big problem. Um, she says, in, okay, Envi the people who should care the most environmentalists don't even identify agriculture as a problem that's false we all realize agriculture is a problem and and she says and it gets even more bizarre in that it's those very agricultural foods that are promoted as the way to save the planet that is bizarre but so is <laughs> eating animals that uh, destroy ecosystems entirely as well, so not really any different. Um, so, yeah, I, I, that is weird. I agree with Lear on that. So I wanted to reach the people most impassioned about the state of our planet and try to explain we have gotten this wrong for a, genera a generation. It's not the values that are wrong, it's purely informational. So I'm starting to think that my assumption about Lier not living her values is true. Um, so anyway, the second reason is that I don't want a new group of idealistic young people to destroy their health. <laughs> a vegetarian diet. So she gets into the health stuff. I should just skip this because she it's wrong. Here we go. A vegetarian diet and especially a vegan diet. Like, go to the medical organizations if you want medical advice. Please go to medical organizations and see what they say. I don't. If you can find me a medical organization that um, explicitly recommends you should eat meat, you you should include meat in your diet. Meat, uh, dead animals are part of a healthy diet. If you can find me the medical organization that explicitly says eat meat, yeah, that is their official recommendation, and even. Even a, a medical organization that includes lean meats in their recommendation. I don't think any of them do anymore. It's just not a health health food. Meat is not a health food. It sustains people. It keeps people alive. But it... it uh, yeah, she says meat is necessary. So um, that, that does not agree with medical uh, doctors that are certified to talk about this stuff. So, um, you know, American Dietetics Association, largest uh, organization of nutrition doctors and scientists in the world, um, says a vegetarian diet does provide for the long-term maintenance of re and repair of the human body, but Lear Keith, who has zero credentials, says it does not. Let's continue. 
vegetarians are on drawdown of their biological reserves. So if you've been vegetarian your whole life, you've actually been shrinking since you were a infant. You're getting smaller if you've been a vegetarian your whole life. Eventually, the rubber hits the road. There's a whole generation of us here who believed in it and tried it until we did permanent damage to our bodies. It was all for nothing. It's pointless suffering. And I want to stop the young ones from doing the same thing. What did she do? Oh, by the way, this Lear Keith lady, it's probably not going to say this in this article, but in, <laughs> I think in her book, or one of these interviews, I remember seeing it, she's like, when I was vegan, quote, when I was vegan, I binged on eggs and dairy every chance I got. So this lady literally never even tried veganism. Uh, I hope, you know, I hope the people that watch this actually watch this all the way through. Because this is important stuff, man. Like, this, the people who just get out there and say sciency sounding stuff to uphold the status quo, they're the ones that are going to get on the news. It doesn't matter how fucking hard you work. You're never going to get in the big public eye for doing the right thing and for speaking the truth. Ever. Because people don't want to hear the truth. You do not want to hear the truth. You do not see the truth. Okay. So here's the next question in the interview. You divide each type of vegetarian vegan into three camps. The moral, political, and nutritional. Can you briefly outline the beliefs of each? Lear says, The moral vegetarians believe that it is possible to eat a diet that includes no animal suffering or animal deaths. Not sure if that's totally accurate, but... We'll let go. And the political vegetarians believe that if everyone was a vegetarian, we could feed the world, which is true, and stop various kinds of environmental destruction. Um, I am a political vegetarian, and I believe we can slow down and possibly stop. Um, all various kinds of environmental destruction possible, and it makes it more plausible if we do that. Um, okay, and the nutritional vegetarians think that animal products <laughs> are the root of all dietary evil, and uh, okay, um, and lead to heart disease and cancer. So that this includes like many doctors and uh, dietitians. Um, Actually, animal products do lead to heart disease. Uh, high cholesterol diets are causal in uh, heart disease. You know, and if it, it, like the cultures that eat the most plant-based diets uh, have the least heart disease. Um, diet uh, and cancer. Well, meat, meat officially, red meat officially does cause cancer. You know, according to World Health Organization. So that you know, you're gonna argue against like fact. You better back it up with some evidence, but well, let's see if she does. Here's the next question. I fall into the moral slash political vegetarian category. In your book, you reveal how this activism will not save the world or produce less animal suffering. Wow. Can you explain? First of all, she says... Lifestyle is not politics. The left has completely cap collapsed into these kind of lifestyle adjustments, abandoning the concept of organizing to confront power. There are no personal solutions to political problems. Only political movements can co confront and dismantle unjust systems of power. That's very wise. Very strong fact there, Lear. Completely agree. We all need to unite. Uh, you know, and actually do something together. At the same time, uh, you know, she's, they, there are personal solutions to some pretty big world problems. So even if they're not political problems, they're big world problems that personal, uh, you know, lifestyle modifications can solve. Or, uh, what's the word? 
me, uh, whatever, remediate or whatever, you know what I'm saying, mitigate. Specifically, agriculture is biotic cleansing, that's true, it requires taking over entire living communities and clearing them away, planting the land just for humans. All of that is a long way of saying extinction. Very true. None of us can live without a place to live, without a habitat. An activity that has destroyed 98% of most animals' habitat can hardly be claimed to be animal-friendly. Very true. We got a lot of shit to deal with. So, so far, I'm like, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty convinced. Vegetarianism will not save the world. We, we have a lot more to do. Um, still, to tell, to tell me that it's not going to make a, a massive difference and put us in the right trajectory, you're smoking some fucking ridiculous shit. Get off the acid trips, get off the fucking bongs and the friggin' get off the couch and go experience life. See, like, just get some fresh air. You're fucking retarded if you think yeah, going vegan doesn't make a massive difference for your health, for the environment. For the people, for the planet. Okay, next question. You write, it's not killing that's domination, <laughs> it's agriculture. Okay, agriculture is killing though, you know, it's the same thing that we're talking about. Uh, agriculture is more like a war than anything else. Can you explain how agriculture is the true villain in our goals toward a more just and sustainable world? So before I read Liera's answer to this question, I just want to say she's pointing fingers, man. She's just like, you can't do this. This is bad. You can't do... She does not have any kind of program. I don't know what she's going to recommend here. Hopefully this lady has something good to say. Because she's just right now, she's just negative Nancy. But she's honest, I guess. For the most part, anyway. Except for the, you know, health aspects of this. So here's Liera's answer uh, to the question, how, can you explain how agriculture is the true villain? This is boring. This is a shitty article. Um, you take a piece of land and you clear every living thing off of it. And I mean down to the bacteria. That's true. Bacteria, that bacteria make B12. So we kill the bacteria, we don't get the B12. That's why we have B12 deficiency epidemic in farm animals. That's why farm animals are injected with vitamin B12. The only vitamin the vegans can't get through plants. It's because it's not there. We have to synthesize it in a lab. So if you're getting your B12 from animals, guess where the animals got their B12? Injections. Uh, that, that's just my little added thing. That's what agriculture is. Richard Manning has this great line, a wheat field is a clear cut of the grass forest. He's right. Besides the mass extinction, it's inherently unsustainable when you remove the perennial polyculture, the grassland, or the forest. The soil is exposed and it dies. So true, we need fruit trees, not cows and fields. Because that's what it ends up. Desertification, again, it turns to desert ultimately. Desertification caused by livestock. Uh, watch the documentary by John Liu, L-I-U, called Green Gold. Amazing documentary. Very truthful. I don't think the guy's a vegan, but he's a permacultural genius. You'll see the truth about this. He gets people on fruits and vegetables, you know, farming fruits and vegetables more sustainably. Again, not 100% because we're not perfect, but a lot better. Um, I could go on about this stuff, man. Long video. We're about halfway through the article, I think. Back to it. Northern Africa once fed the Roman Empire. Iraq was forests so thick that sunlight never touched the ground. No one in their right mind would call it the Fertile Crescent now. It's a desert. <laughs> Sucks. The dust storms in China are so bad that the soil is literally blowing across the Pacific Ocean and over the continent until it hits the Rocky Mountains. Oh my god, where it's causing asthma in children in Denver? 
So ch dust from China is causing asthma in children in Denver? Wow. Um, I'm not sure about that, but that's pretty crazy shit. The planet has been skinned alive, and the only reason we have not hit complete collapse is because we've been eating fossil fuel since 1950. <laughs> that is fucked and true. This is not a plan with a future. As peak oil is probably behind us, it is, and we are on the down sill of Hubbard's curve. Peak oil. Def uh, definitely true, I think, in my opinion. Okay, next question. BNT. Um, you're right. No one told me that life is only possible through death, and that our bodies are a gift from the world, and that our final gift is to feed each other. Can you elaborate on this truth? I think it's more of a uh, perception, but, you know, often, often true, so. Um, can you elaborate on this truth, and how we can apply this ethos to our lives and the food we eat? She says there is no death-free option. I think, uh, okay, that's that's realism. Although, it's realistic, but it lacks, it's, there is no death-free option. It's realistic, but it's not 100% true, so it's kind of, it's like good that she's conservative with her beliefs and all that, but it's not actually true. So it doesn't really matter how conservative it is if it's not true. You know? So it's kind of like, you, you're right in most cases, but you're not really right. You know, the most sustainable world we're going to create is a uh, uh, society based on fruit. Um, the only options we have are the death that's a part of the cycle of life and the death that's destroying the cycle of life. Agriculture is the latter. So she wants, she, you know, again, Lear Keith, hunter-gatherer, 100%. <laughs> I mean, she, like, what is she thinking? She, she wants to get rid of agriculture, so she doesn't have to work on a farm. What is she doing with her time? She's sitting on the computer, trolling the net, watching porn, masturbating, eating agriculturally produced food. So just a huge, huge, huge hypocrite. Just pointing fingers at agriculture. Agriculture's the problem, so don't do it. You know, if, if, if it's the biggest problem, then just... I guess, you know, maybe she's just really cynical. You know, and she just doesn't, like, want a solution. Because if the solution is to go be a hunter-gatherer, you should just go do it, Lear. You should just go do it. <laughs> you know? Being a hunter-gatherer is better for the environment, sure. But we, we, we aren't hunter-gatherers. We, we propagate the, uh, these herds of animals. It's, it's like a symbiotic relationship we have with these animals and it's symbiotic yeah but it's like it's so one-sided it's so unfair to the animals you know that we just we own them you know and we propagate them we breed them we are not predators we are not predators we are we are different than the predators we kill predators so we can eat, eat the uh, livestock so she, so, so, and, and, so she says, yeah, the only options we have are the death that's part of the cycle of life. So, which is based on her belief that you can't kill. It, it's not true. The truth is you can eat without killing. But her belief is you cannot eat without killing. And, yeah, you know, so. If our planet has any hope... It will be because we repair the perennial polycultures. Absolutely true. The grasslands, the forests, the wetlands. And take our place once again as participants in those biotic communities. Instead of as destroyers of them. 
That's what we did for our first four million years. We were participants in living communities. It's only in the last 10,000 that we've become monsters. Since your book's pu okay, since your book's publication in 2009, were you surprised by your reactions from the vegan vegetarian community? She says, I was in the vegan world for 20 years, but I did not realize that vegans would stalk, harass, and assault me. I guess she got assaulted by a vegan. Didn't know vegans did that. Didn't realize that I was dealing with people who are that cult-like and fundamentalist in their mentality. It's true, I see a lot of, um, you know, fundamentalist, uh, vegans that I'm like, oh man, it's, it's true, like, if, if you believe that, like, not killing animals is, like, just so priority, I, to me, like, I would eat an animal if I had to, you know, but I just don't have to, and so it's kind of like, why the fuck would I do that? Like, it's, it's just gross and bloody, and, you know, it's just, like, kind of an obvious choice. Like, I don't want to do that. It smells bad, and it, like, makes my, my poop stink, and, you know, causes disease. It's just smelly and yucky, basically. Um, gross. <laughs> Unsanitary. Violent. Uh, but, yeah, you know, that's just me. Um, I can't speak in public without security now. And they have let me know that they know where I live. Well, you know, if you're gonna go out saying the vegetarian myth, I don't, I don't know. I, I, we, we all have to form our own beliefs. It's cool. Like we gotta coexist with people like Lear, but um, we, we don't have to defend veganism against this stuff, you know. Um, she says, they have, ironically, proved my point about the psychology of veganism better than my words ever could. I don't give in to bullies, and besides, my planet is at stake, so I'm not going to stop. But there's a very scary psychology running through this community. So, you know, this is Lierre kind of like mirror image with the fundamentalist vegans. She's like, you can't be vegan. And these vegans are like, you can't be, you know, a meat eater, I, I think the right answer is, uh, you shouldn't be a meat eater, because it sucks, like, eating meat fucking sucks, and it's bullshit, and you can't argue with that, it's fact, it's not opinion, um, and she's saying, <laughs> you, you can't be vegan, and these vegans are saying, D don't, you can't eat meat, and it's like, uh, that, these are separate issues, you know, animal rights, animals have rights, and people don't respect them, but it's different than, uh, you know, sustainability. So, like, it's good that we have this discussion, but she she's as fundamentalist as these vegans, so... I, I just hope that she realizes that you you can be vegan and be extremely sustain be 100% sustainable. It's a possibility. I don't think there's any... I don't think there's a goddamn soul on this planet, not even hunter-gatherers, that are 100% sustainable. Anyway. So, she's got a similar psychology here. She's like, we have to eat meat. And it's not based on fact, it's just based on, like, this, uh, the, the bad logic of certain vegans. Next question. On the other hand, did any unforeseen allies reach out afterward that you didn't expect it? <laughs> I get emails every day from ex-vegans thanking me for saving their lives. That makes it worth it. And I've also met farmers who have given up annual monocrops and are restoring their land to prairies and savannas because of my book. There are birds nesting on those la lands that haven't seen, been seen for over a hundred years. And that definitely makes it worth it. So I guess she does have some good content in this book if she's like actually promoting some more sustainable ways of life. But I don't, I don't, I don't get the the eating animals thing. It's not it's not re related to it. It's not relevant. 
I'll take the hostility of vegans in exchange for a nest of fledglings any day. Good attitude. It's amazing to think that my work has that kind of an impact. Given the response, is there anything you would have argued differently looking back? She said no. In order to save the world, we must know it. You write that much of the destruction we inflict on the world is a result of our disconnection. How can each of us truly come to know the world? We have to build relationships with the creatures that make our lives possible and with whom we share this planet. And that's all of them. The bacteria, the plants, the insects, the birds. Not just the mammals, everybody else. Animals are only 15% of life. In a biological sense, this is a planet of bacteria. They're the people doing the basic work of life. They keep the basic cycles going, the carbon cycle, the nitrogen cycle, without which no animals would be here. We need to get profoundly humble before the incredible activities they do that make our lives possible. That humility needs to be the basis of our culture, our religion, our reality. Very true. Very true. So I'm waiting for the part when she's going to say, like, here's why... You should eat animals. You write. If you hear nothing else in this book, hear this. There is no personal solution. Also, the task of an activist is not to negotiate systems of, of power with as much personal integrity as possible. It's to dismantle those systems. Why, why do you feel the mainstream emphasizes personal lifestyle choices and the main path to a better future? Why do you believe this path is misleading? It's misleading because it's useless. Hmm. The mainstream has taken this up because it's easy. It requires no risk. Direct confrontations with power, on the other hand, require serious courage. As Frederick Douglass wrote, power concedes nothing without a demand. It never did and it never will. Saving this planet will require a serious resistance movement to industrial capitalism and ultimately to civilization. Uh, you write, state in your book that you avoid easy answers to complex resistance, but you still offer some basic guidelines. One powerful question you offer is to ask, what grows where you live? Why is this so important? I think that's obvious. I'm going to skip her answer. Um, yep, definitely true. Finally, as we move into an uncertain future, I th hopefully this is the last question, you state the importance of inoculating people against future fascism. Why do you see this as critically important? Uh, in times of social collapse, yeah, desperate people can do very ugly things. Since the book was released, we've seen the r rise of the Tea Party movement, who have successfully run candidates for office. The public discourse has turned more and more to violence. People are getting desperate in this country as the wealthy have destroyed first the working class, then the middle class. All that's left are the poor, the old, and the sick, and now the Republicans are going after Social Security and Medicaid. Rick Perry is running for the president, and he is a dominionist Christian who truly believes that the United States should be a rel religious theocracy. We need to get active, or we will be living under the Christian Taliban. Um, so she's like, you know, she makes these vague statements saying that we got to respect ecosystems and it's just a negative article against vegetarianism. So she like makes some good points, but it's like, I, I, she didn't like convince anybody, yes, you should eat meat. So like. I don't know, like, these people are going to use this article, which is not a bad article, it's not like a misleading article or anything, but they're going to use it to make uninformed decisions. See, they're going to act like they're informed because there's a lot of problems that eating right won't solve. And, uh, they're, they're going to use... Yeah, they're going to use this as their reason to continue with their poor eating habits. And we're going to see. Yeah, that, that's what people do.
So, it's, uh, is Lear Keith misleading people? She, no, she's not misleading people. She's just saying, hey, I've got, uh, she, she She needs to. Not, I, I don't agree with uh, her stance on vegetarianism. That she says is not going to save the world. Absolutely true. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Like she doesn't explicitly say that you shouldn't be vegetarian. I just. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll read the vegetarian myth after all and just see what she's actually talking about. So I guess the vegetarian myth is, the myth is that vegetarians are, can save the world. But the truth is, <laughs> the truth is, it's, it's got to be a big thing. It's bigger bigger than even anything. It's, it's, the, it's the planet, it's the whole planet. It's a bigger thing than any of the creatures walking on it. So no, no one thing is going to save the world. But don't be talking shit about vegetarianism. It's like, it's not cool because it's going to fuck people's health over. And uh, all that stuff. So, yeah. I, I, I don't feel like talking about this right now. I'll, I'll, I'm going to do another video on it later. It's way too long as it is. Holy shit, this is a long video. But yeah, thanks for watching. I'll, I'll do like an abridged version maybe um, like at the end of the month when I have uh, some good editing software set up and stuff yeah, I'll do like a quicker response to this but yeah the big subject big big issue can we save the world by just making one decision don't think so but don't talk shit about my method because my method, uh, you know, this path is awesome, it's powerful, and it does great things. So just speak the truth. You know, it's not going to save the world. I agree with Lear. But don't, don't say that a good thing is bad because it's not going to save the world. You know, bicycles aren't going to save the world, but they're a goddamn good thing. Same for the diet. Alright, thanks for watching. Peace, y'all.